April Elizabeth Planning Board meeting of July 18th, year 2000. While the board is reviewing the minutes of the previous meeting, correspondence, the first applicant concerning Wellback Ridge subdivision could get ready to present if you like. First order of business is the minutes of the previous meeting of June 20th, the year 2000. Any comments from board members? Yes, go right ahead. Mr. Accepted. Thank you. We have a motion to Second. accept the minutes. Is there a Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Parkhurst, any concerns or comments on the minutes? Hearing none, those in favor of accepting the minutes from the previous reading, raise your right hand. Thank you. The minutes are approved. Correspondence received in this month's meeting packet include a letter from R. Crippler in regards to Wellback Ridge, a letter from the town manager in regards to Wellback Ridge. Notification of the settlement of the Johnson versus Cape Elizabeth decision involving the Scout House restaurant. Letter from the town manager in regards to On Our Planet. And a copy of Zoning News, May 2000. In addition, there was correspondence received this evening on the podium, which has been read. One from Phyllis Cogsall in regards to On Our Planet Daycare. Correspondence from On Our Planet in regards to their application and amendments thereto. Any questions or comments in regards to correspondence received? Hearing none, we'll move on to the first item on the agenda this evening. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have to recuse myself for this particular item. Thank you, Mr. Parkhurst. Mr. Chair, I also need to recuse myself. Thank you, Mr. Wilcox. For the record, there are four of us remaining. That is still a quorum. That's good. Go right ahead, Owen. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, my name is Owens McCullough. I'm a civil engineer with the firm of Sebago Technics here tonight on behalf of Fitzpatrick Associates. Uh, with me tonight is uh, Joel Fitzpatrick, Kelly Fitzpatrick, uh, Steve Groves from Sebago Technics, and Mark Hampton of Mark Hampton Associates. Uh, they've come along. Uh, to try to help answer any questions that uh, may arise during the uh, planning board discussions and review of the project. Uh, since we were last, when we were last before the board, uh, we were there for a completeness review, and we are now prepared to come back, hopefully, uh, to seek uh, subdiv minors, or should say subdivision approval uh, in a preliminary way tonight, and hopefully return again for final approval. Uh, just to recap the project briefly, uh, when we were last before the board, the project's a six-lot uh, subdivision. One of the lots is an existing, uh, has an existing house on it. Uh, that lot would be retained and resold. Uh, there's open space associated with the subdivision. The total parcel is about 11.2 acres in size. Uh, what we are seeking tonight is major subdivision review. Uh, approval through the open space standards, an RP permit uh, for the project. Uh, we had an opportunity to walk the site with the planning board back in the spring and then uh, went to two, I believe, two workshop meetings and um, here for a second planning board meeting. Um, as you may recall, the project is going to be serviced by a paved roadway with curb coming in through here off the old Ocean House Road and across from the uh, Trundy Point Road. Uh, the project will include underground utilities, uh, electric telephone, uh, public water. It will include individual on-site septic systems and a storm drainage system with a detention pond uh, to limit post-development runoff to pre-development rates. The pond is going to go here <coughs> in this area. There's also a proposed open space area as part of it uh, with a trail system associated with it. Uh, we had a chance to walk the site uh, during the planning board site walk with the Conservation Commission and uh, look at that open space and I know that Maureen has a memorandum from them that I think was passed out to the board. Um, a couple of things that uh, have been brought up as we've worked through the project um, and let me start by saying that uh, the project has also been reviewed by the town's engineer uh, Steve Harding of Oast Associates for the stormwater drainage and uh, general design parameters. Steve has uh, issued uh, 
um, a second review letter with some minor requests for some technical changes as, as part of the project. One of the things that came up or has been uh, mentioned is the location of the proposed roadway across from the Trundy Point Road. Uh, the town planner and town engineer have discussed that in their memorandums that have been handed out to the planning board. Basically, um, the town has an ordinance requirement, I believe it's 125 feet between uh, intersections. Uh, this project is proposing an entrance directly across from the Trundy Point Road. This is common. Um, and I believe meets the intent of the ordinance. Typically, when you offset uh, roadways, the concern is that if you, if you don't offset them, you either have them directly across or you offset them enough so that you avoid any potential uh, conflicts with turning movements. This one happens to be aligned so that the two intersections are across from each other, and Steve Harding's looked at it and felt that it uh, meets the intent of the ordinance. It's similar to one of the intersections of the Cross Hill subdivision and I think uh, meets uh, the requirements of the ordinance and provides for a safe intersection. Uh, there's uh, more than adequate sight distance uh, at the intersection, uh, 475 feet uh, looking, I guess that would be um, westerly and in excess of 500 feet uh, easterly on the old Ocean House Road. Uh, in regard to drainage, um, one of the things that uh, was brought up during the site walk was by uh, June Island, who lives on this parcel here. There's a drainage course that runs through her lot and then into this depressional wetland and eventually out. She expressed concern during the site walk that we make sure that we provide an adequate drainage system to collect drainage from her parcel and is integrated into ours, which we have done. Uh, there's a culvert that's proposed about in this location uh, coming off the property. Uh, when we walked it with the planning board, I think we noticed that there's sort of a, a wet area and drainage kind of flows down through here. We don't want to block that off, so we are providing a culvert uh, to pick that drainage up, which will then be routed through our drainage system uh, in the project. Um, also, um, as part of the project, about 3,000 square feet of wetland area will need to be filled. Uh, Mark Hampton of Mark Hampton Associates is here. Um, he actually contacted Rod Howe from the Army Corps of Engineers to walk the project. There's a letter that was uh, turned into the town plan, and I think part of the packet uh, that last went for uh, the planning board. Uh, we could, Mark is here to answer any questions if the board has any about the uh, wetlands or um, associated uh, site walk with the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, one of the other items that came up at the last planning board meeting was open space. Um, since the project is proposing to dedicate open space, the question came up is should that land be made part of the subdivision or should it be offered to the town? Uh, the applicant is willing either way and I believe Maureen went through a very thorough study um, in her packet about the lost generation of taxes if it's given to the town versus being owned in one sixth B interest by the lot owners and I I think it was like a difference of two hundred and sixty two dollars a year if that's about right. Uh, so the applicant is uh, willing either way to uh, dedicate to the town or retain it. Um, the town manager has included a letter uh, the, regarding uh, municipal acceptance of the uh, of the land and the applicant again is willing to uh, dedicate that to the town if, if the planning board desires. Um, another item was the location of a sidewalk. Uh, the applicant has shown a sidewalk on the plan on this side of the road which would provide a link from Old Ocean House Road to the open space and to the uh, trail that would be installed. I know that there's been some discussion between staff uh, about whether or not that trail, sh or whether or not that sidewalk should be installed. Again, the applicant's willing to do it and would defer that to staff and the planning board for a final decision. In addition, uh, there was a question about buffering um, along the June Island property. If you remember, when we walked down the site, um, there's some uh, mature trees that unfortunately have to be removed because they're right in the location where the road would need to go, and then it's lawn area with some with a, a hedge 
along the left hand side. The applicant is willing to uh, increase the buffering in there. He's met uh, once with uh, June, I believe. We're working out the details and Joel will meet again and we'll have a very specific proposal of what to do along there, which may include landscaping or potentially a fence, uh, whatever gets worked out between the two. And we would propose to resolve that before the uh, final approval of the project. One more item that uh, has come up uh, during the review of the project is um, two, uh, Joel has met with some of the abutters of the project and they have uh, brought up some concerns about the location of this trail coming through this right away over to Old Ocean House Road. Um, Tinsman has developed a house in through there and lives there and would prefer that that trail did not get built through that area. The applicant has met with them and through the discussions and uh, the applicant is willing to make a small change to the project and the, ap the applicants and the abutters have discussed this. And if I can change would be eliminating the trail coming through this area here and conveying this right of way uh, to the abutter and in exchange um, a piece of land would be conveyed to the applicant so that the trail could come up and link over to Route 77 and I believe that uh, provides linkage heading over towards Great Pond. Is that and I'm going to look at Maureen for a little help because I'm not as familiar with the trail system. That's the general direction. That's the general direction. So the applicant is willing to do that um, in an effort to uh, work with the abutters on the, on the project. Um, also shown in the green here, as far as the setbacks go on the project, since this is an open space zone, I believe there's only a five foot setback required along the property lines. The applicant has increased the setback to at least 15 feet and is willing to increase the buffer to 30 or 50 feet along this rear uh, property line. And I'm sure the abutters are here and will want to speak to uh, the discussions Joel and them have had so I won't uh, go on with that anymore. Um, we're here tonight to seek preliminary plan approval uh, so that we may be able to move on to um, the final plan stage. Uh, we've got all the engineering drawings uh, complete. Uh, we're in the process of making some minor revisions to the plan to address the town engineer's comment and are ready to move forward with the public hearing and answer any questions the board may have. Thank you. Thank you, Owen. <coughs> any questions of Owen before we move on to the public hearing? Do you have anything to add, Owen? At this time, I'd like to open the public hearing. Those who have an interest in this project, feel free to come to the podium one at a time, identify yourself by name and address, and I encourage anybody who has an interest in this project to come forward and speak. If we happen to have a large rush for the podium, uh, feel free to line up against the windows and uh, take as much time as you need. We encourage public participation. So therefore, the public hearing is now open. Good evening. Uh, Peter Carlisle. I live on 445 Old Ocean House Road. And I've had several discussions with Joel Fitzpatrick about primarily the location of the, uh, the public walkway, which on this plan uh, comes in where there is a gully uh, bordering Old Ocean House Road. It's all within the RP1 overlay district, I believe and proposes to cross a drainage ditch that we have there now. Uh, so it's, it seems to me that it's probably not the best place for public access. And obviously, both my neighbor and I would prefer that we didn't have, uh, whether it be uh, in the near future or uh, five or 10 years down the road, you know, the public walking right through our front lawns. Uh, and that's the way that the lawn is configured now. It, it really isn't much of a place for a uh, public walkway. 
So I have expressed interest in uh, perhaps deeding a comparable amount of land in the back of my piece that would hopefully provide, uh, you know, satisfy the interests of the Conservation Committee with regard to the open space or the green belt or whatever else they're looking to get from this piece back here, which I believe Joel has situated in such a way that it will connect all the way back to Old Ocean House Road again. And so I have uh, some major concerns with, with it going here and uh, am certainly interested and open-minded about transferring ownership of this piece to relocate that path. That's, uh, that's one of several concerns I have. Uh, another uh, concern I have with the, with the proposed development is the, uh, the, the retention pond. And I've, I've read the file, I've been through it as best I can, and I'm hoping to, uh, to learn more about whether or not it will affect my property uh, in the coming days. Uh, my concern is we're now relocating all of the, uh, the water accumulation from this whole piece, and, and I, uh, it, was, it was said that some of this is going to be all uh, redirected through culverts back down to the retention pond here. As best I can tell from that, uh, there will be discharge from that pond into a level spreader and uh, uh, given the composition of the soil in my field, I'm concerned that it will increase the, uh, uh, increase the dampness of that soil and, and make the field wetter. I am not a soils expert and uh, it's taking me some time to feel comfortable about whether or not uh, this plan will affect it one way or the other. So I just, I'll articulate that concern now and, uh, and hopefully we'll uh, have that question answered uh, for me in the near future. So, but if, you, if the board has any questions about this piece of land here that would connect the green belt on the far side of my property closest to 77, I'd be happy to uh, answer any questions. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Further comment? My name's uh, Patrick Tinsman, uh, 447 Old Ocean House Road. I live in, I uh, just built this house about a year ago. Um, I just have similar concerns um, with the path um, going in between uh, Peter's house and my house. Um, it's over a uh, a uh, drainage easement, which is pretty much impassable by uh, by foot. Anyways, there's uh, water always flowing through here, and there's a um, drainage ditch um, or gully or whatever at the at the road. So it just didn't it doesn't make sense to have any kind of a uh, uh, you know path going path going through here, and uh, I don't believe that it's any. Uh, big link to the green belt or whatever. I do know that um, what Peters proposed uh, to give that piece of land, there's a path right directly across 77, which would um, link it to 77. I don't know who owns the land there, but it's commonly used for uh, pedestrian uh, walking right now and uh, cross-country skiing. And, and, and uh, it's just, uh, I think, pretty close to directly across uh, the uh, road. Um, so I think with having a path down here and then up, you know, up through here is actually going somewhere other than uh, coming in and not really going anywhere but just uh, down the street a little ways. Um, I think that's much of a, much of a trail linking, linking to anything. Um, and uh, you know, also uh, the way our front yards are configured, um, we would be cutting right across our, our front yards as well. Um, See, my, uh, another concern I had, and uh, it seems like Joel, I've met with Joel a few times, and he's willing to uh, uh, increase the setback, uh, but um, the, the original plan that when you guys went to see the site walk, it's changed. This lot wasn't here. There was a lot over here, and uh, you know, I had, taken a, I had taken a look, and there was really relatively no impact uh, to my lot, per se. Um, but the way with this lot, lot six, is uh, now moved over. It was, it was. I don't know if you guys have 
the original plan compared to the plan now. It's changed quite a bit. And uh, with there only being, I think, a five-foot setback, and he's, he's willing to increase it a little bit, uh, I'm just I'm really worried about the impact. Uh, this is actually this is a hill, and I've got a three-story I've got a three-story home, and the hill is actually if you're standing on the hill that he's going to be building a house, it's 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 over my roof. So, and uh, with the potential of building a house five feet, where I have a 30-foot setback right now when I built my house, uh, and only five feet off, I don't think anyone would build it. But with the way the ordinance is set up, they could build a uh, house five feet from the line. Uh, which is uh, just, uh, you know, horrible impact on my on my backyard. And uh, um, another, I, I guess. Uh, so, you know, I don't know if it'd be appropriate to have another site walk or whatever. But this, you know, like I said, this this when you guys walked the land, this, this lot wasn't here. So now you could take a look at actually where the lot line is and the impact on myself and I believe this neighbor as well um, and I know Joel is willing to do a little bit to, to uh, lessen that I guess um, and I, I'm I guess one thing I'm I'm worried about because um, when I when I bought I, I actually originally had bought this whole parcel and uh, sold Peter Carlisle this this house and lot, and it came with a two-acre lot, and I built my home here. Is I looked at this um, whole parcel of land, and had read up on the ordinance and everything, and uh, didn't think there was a good access point. I had looked at these two access points, and uh, really didn't think it was clear in the ordinance, um, section 16-3-1b. Uh, page 20 in the ordinance, um, where an access road can't go within 125 feet uh, of an intersection, and I don't necessarily agree with it uh, going directly across. It, I, I still believe that in the ordinance it's, it, it says 125 feet. So I don't, I, I don't believe that this ordinance is clear. Um, I know that it stopped me from buying this piece of land. Uh, because I, I I counted this out as as access, um, um, and uh, I don't know if uh, anyone on the boards read that section of the the uh, ordinance or if it would be worth uh, reading it and uh, and uh, you know seeing how you know how how you guys would um, would um, Define, define it. It's, uh, it's clearly, clearly states. It, it does not state, uh, you know, 125 feet unless it's directly across. In no way does it is the wording that it's, it's that a that an access road or a, another road for subdivision cannot be within 125 feet, and that's clearly within 125 feet. Um, there's exception. There's an exception, but uh, for a waiver and clearly does not constitute uh, the, de the definition of, uh, you know, an exception for a waiver as well. So it's clearly, I believe, putting this road in is clearly against the ordinance. And I particularly did not buy this land because there was not a right of way there. And, and now, for some reason, there is a right of way there. Um, um, so. At least the or the ordinance should be reworded or uh, something because it's it's uh, so that was my concern and uh, concern about the safety issue of uh, Trendy Point. It's a very dangerous uh, road coming out at an angle down a hill with trees and uh, I'm surprised there's not a lot more accidents on that corner. I know this car's always pulling out, uh, so you know you you can't see around the corner. So uh, I don't know how. When you, you got to contend with people pulling out here, and uh, you know, um, now I, I don't know. Is there a uh, who does the? Uh, is there a uh, safety? Is there someone that does a safety uh, inspection for this for this road? Someone in the town? Usually the police department. 
Have they at done, our request. Have they done one? I anticipate it being part of the application package. Okay, because I, I just worried about the safety uh, issue. And then uh, my concern with uh, the way the ordinance is, is spelled out, and I, I believe uh, if you guys read it, you're, you're going to probably agree with me. Um, and uh, I guess uh, the, the path and, and my, uh, my uh, buffer is, is pretty much it. So those are my concerns. Thank you, Mr. Tinsman. Further comment? Go right ahead, please. Uh, first off, in the newspaper, it said 7.30. <laughs> so obviously you had started at 7. Uh, I'm June Island. I own this lot right here next to the proposed road. And I do have uh, quite a few issues. Um, as Mr. Tinsman noted, the 125-foot from a road, another access road, was something I came upon early and asked Maureen about, and she said, oh, no, that's not a problem. Straight across was fine. As it stands currently, uh, there are at least 100 homes up at Trundy Road. It's like Grand Central Station coming down there. Um, I do see that as a, a little bit of a problem. But aside from that, um, my property runs the whole length of this, and I'm going to have this road here, which will um, have an impact on me and my setbacks, because now I'm going to have to deal with road setbacks on two sides. I become a corner lot. Um, I also have a spruce tree here, and I'm not sure if that has enough clearance there for the corner visibility. Um, the way it's set, I was, I, I didn't go out and measure it, but it's growing, so as it grows, how am I affected by that? Um, one of the issues I had earlier was drainage, uh, which was addressed from back here, because I have a pond that drains this way, and he's put in a uh, catch base, or he's planning a catch basin back here to take care of that. The other issue is that along these lots right here, um, there is a drainage culvert that ends in this backyard and it runs the whole length of these three lots um, and it starts at my property line. And if he does the road as he proposes, which is to level it off, it goes downhill and then uphill again and he wants to level it off, uh, the drainage from my yard that's going this way is going to be blocked in some manner. and. I'm also curious how that's going to affect that drainage culvert. I don't know how far under the ground that is. But obviously, this, this culvert was put in um, because of the amount of water and runoff on this soils type. Without that, I'm sure we'd be swampland. Um, I know in the back of um, Werner's yard, there are a couple of springs that come up. Um, I've got a pond in my backyard. It's, it's not really very well drained soils, and I don't see this being any better drainage than this, personally. If you drive down 77 and you look at the road, you see ledge. And all the soil that's on top of it is what has accumulated there over the years. Uh, but when you get past the 10, actually, his initial perf tests were 6 inches to 20 inches to ledge. Uh, when you get beyond that, ledge does not drain. So I'm concerned of putting five septics for five houses that are going to have three, bed, bed, or three bathrooms and expecting that to drain. Um, you know, that's, that's not going to affect me, but I wouldn't want to have any one of those houses if you've got a septic system. Um, in that type of environment. Obviously, they're going to be covering, you know, a certain amount of the lot with their house. They're going to have to put drainage systems around their house so that they don't have basements full of water. And my, uh, several of them are planning on having pumped up um, septic systems. And you pump up hill, and it's got to drain somewhere. I mean, it, it has to go somewhere. And I know in my backyard, it's, it's squishy. Well, right now, it's, it's, it's just about dry now. 
but there's two in two two three month window that it's dry and the rest of the year it's saturated and i don't see how this land will support that number of septics in that area um, another issue i have is um, my understanding of the development as he has it is that he has to have one moderate income house um, as a part of the development and his plan is to have the one in the front as his moderate income house and that's already an existing house and he's not adding anything to Cape Elizabeth that wasn't already there so in essence he hasn't added a moderate income house with his development he has just added high priced houses which I also don't feel fit in with the neighborhood as it exists around it um, and let's see make sure I um, the other thing that I'm not sure about is I have two propane tanks on the side of my garage and I'm not sure what the setback for a propane tank is from a road um, I know there are certain regulations I, I know I had to put it over there because I had to have it so far from a window and so far from the road and I'm not sure what those setbacks are but that was something I, I forgot to look into and uh, need to um, there are also a couple of very very old trees back on this lot here that I would like to see preserved um, they're, they've got to be well over 100 years old they're huge uh, and wonderful trees as a matter of fact um, and do, do, do. Uh, and another question I have is are my setbacks 40 feet from the road or the right of way for the road Does anybody answer that one no it's a question you should ask the town planner Okay. During the normal okay. business hours, she'll be happy to okay. answer it for you. Um, it is the right of way. It is Save the right of way. Call. So 40 feet from the right of way. So then, my garage is not 40 feet mm. from where he plans to have his right of way. It's an existing building. It's an exist, but it's not an existing right of way. So, doesn't that? I mean, what's good for the goose isn't good for the gander. Well, would you like to answer? Um, when another property owner adjacent to you wants to put up a structure they have to worry about setbacks from their property line and you worry about setbacks from your property line this particular property owner would have to worry about whether or not there's a setback for a road from the property line not whether or not establishing a road is going to create a setback issue for your 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 structure what will happen is if your structure is too close to the road, it could become a non-conforming structure, but it doesn't mean it can't stay there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in the future, anything I build has to be 40 feet from his right away. So that has now increased my... No, because that's, that's a local road. I believe the setback from that would be 20 feet. Okay. Um, okay. If he... A local, a local road... Now, my understanding was he wanted to keep that as a private road and then at some point give it over to the town. He plans on giving it to the town right away. Okay. Um, then a local road is, I don't believe it's 20 feet, I believe it's 40, but I will, I will check on that. Um, and those are my concerns in a nutshell. Thank you. Further comment? Thank you. My name is Dan Chase. I live at 26 Stony Brook Road. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a cold. Um, speaking tonight as chairman of the Conservation Commission, I'd like to make two points. Uh, the first one is in terms of the open space, I believe it would be more valuable to have that open space transferred to the town. Um, you know, Wife Brook runs down here, and I think uh, that's that's one of our most important natural features in the town. And I think it would 
be beneficial as far as uh, giving the brook that much more protection to have that the open space uh, be transferred to the town rather than <coughs> uh, this joint ownership among the property owners. Uh, second point is the routing of the trail. I, from, I, I believe, uh, well, we haven't had a chance to walk the whole trail yet. And uh, I think from our perspective, the original proposal would be more valuable um, with this connection down to Old Ocean House Road. It would be much more, of a, much more apt to gather other pedestrians from this part of Old Ocean House Road and, and send them up this trail. Uh, it's true that as shown on the plan, the trail really doesn't go anywhere on the plan, but uh, I'm sure you know that there's been a lot of subdivisions done with, with uh, trails that were put in which don't necessarily connect to anything right now, but um, you know, we're, we're seeing more and more of those connections that have, have become very valuable, and I, I think uh, you know, this, this would be a valuable, a valuable connection at some point. And, and I think what uh, we, we, the Commission has not had a chance to review the proposed routing, and I think at a minimum I'd like to have the Commission go out and do another site walk and just and check the whole route and see whatever potential problems there are down here and uh, what the potential interconnection might be up there. Thank you. Thank you. Further comments from the public? My name's Nancy Irving. I live at 12 Crescent View Ave. I'm also on the Conservation Committee. Um, first, I want to uh, uh, say thank you to the developer. We have to have development in Cape Elizabeth. It's nice to have a developer who um, considers giving us open space. Um, this is a one-shot deal. Once we lose the open space, it's not there for us to enjoy again. Um, so it's very important that when development goes in, that we do um, get some trails and um, the access to the public. Um, again, when our children and our grandchildren are trying to enjoy Cape Elizabeth, um, part of our enjoyment is the natural beauty of Cape Elizabeth, and this allows access to a real nice area. I have not walked this trail. I have the same concern as Dan that we haven't seen what this kind of access will give us. I think the Commission, though, is open to taking a look at that and making a recommendation. Um, but it's important that we understand that um, the town has easements um, to allow all of its citizens to um, enjoy some of the, the natural beauty of Cape Elizabeth. And we have to relish that and um, make sure that we appreciate it when it's offered to us from a developer. Um, so I'd like the council to think about that when um, you get plans like this. Thank you. Thank you. Further comments? Yes, sir. Good evening, Mr. Chairman. I'll make my comments brief. My own audience is waiting for me here. Um, I'm also on the uh, Conservation Commission and speak briefly about the open space and the trails. Um, I'd like to also thank the, the developer and also the neighbors for coming forward, the abutters down at this end and bringing their uh, issues to light. Uh, for us, I think, um, and we haven't meant to consider the proposal, the alternative, uh, but open space and trails is the big issue. Where they're located, I think, uh, is important, um, but it's also important to let um, abutters know and future neighbors know that the commission, at least, is going to listen to their issues and try to route possible trails in a way that um, is a win-win for everybody. This may end up being a great proposal, and I uh, would like to compliment uh, the abutters in this end for at least presenting us with an alternative that might work for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no one rising, I'm going to close the public hearing at this time.
this time the board is we are open for discussion of this project. Chairman, I have a couple of John, questions. John, please go right ahead. Uh, for the applicant, if I could. Uh, first, on the issue of the drainage and Ms. Island's concerns, uh, is there uh, any sort of uh, drainage under the road going across from her property? You know, we did a pretty intensive field survey on this site. Um, we did not find at Culvert any signs of excavation uh, through there where a culvert has been installed in this area where the road would go. So there's no culvert <coughs> there now? What we are proposing to do as part of the site is in the back of her yard, it's, it's low in through here, and there's a natural tendency of the drainage to lay and work its way this way. There's a ridge that actually runs through here and in this open space, actually the open space is, is, is in the high point of that ridge running right through here. What the applicant is proposing to do is to install a culvert, uh, not a catch basin, an actual culvert in through here, sized based on a stormwater drainage analysis. We went through all the calculations, asked to have it peer reviewed by the town engineer who has walked the site, met with Steve Groves of our office who did all the calculations and spent time to come up with a design which will collect the drainage so that this isn't blocked in through here. And when I say it brings it, it's got to collect it, bring it into our storm drainage system down to this detention pond. The intent is to maintain the free flow of drainage that comes off the site, bring it through our system. The system's designed to handle that flow. And when the way the road is to be constructed, there's actually going to be a vertical curve, a depression a lower point in the road as it comes down through here. All the drainage along the road, you know, the road's going to be curved with catch basins in the road, so the water within the road will stay within the road. And then any water off the road, the natural lay of the contours towards the rear of the parcels where it's directed to where that culvert will be installed. The detention pond that's going to be installed is, in, is designed to limit post-development runoff to pre-development. In other words, it's going to hold the runoff to what was coming off before, and I believe our calculations actually show uh, that we're over detaining and the peak rate of runoff will actually be lower than pre-development. And again, that's gone through a uh, substantial peer review. Frankly, over the last three months, uh, when we started the project, we discussed it with the town engineer, worked through the drainage on that. Another question. Uh, can you go to the alternate sure. plan on the uh, path? Okay, just so I'm clear on that proposal then, the, would the open space behind the lots be eliminated or is that just not shaded in? That's just not shaded in. The okay. open space as shown in the shaded here would stay. That wouldn't change. We would take this piece here and it would end up being conveyed to the abutters. And in exchange for that, the, an equal area piece would be acquired. And then just simply the trail rerouted. David? I have two questions. The green spot on the east side of lot six, um, that will just, that's just an open area that is going to access nowhere, it's just left as an open area? That's correct. The applicant is willing to uh, provide a 30 to 50 foot set building setback in that uh, the open space is only allows you to go within five feet i think the, the zoning regulation if you weren't doing open space is 30 feet so he's willing to meet that and add 20 feet to it so that the building the house would be set back 50 feet uh, from that sideline so it'd be t rather than 15 feet it's 20 feet um, I'm, I'm sorry, along here? Yes. Yeah. It, the total would be 50 feet? The total would be 50 feet. That's correct. 
relative to lot six, um, when you change that, did that if was your stormwater runoff calculated prior to that lot being changed to a building lot, or was it? No, actually, uh, the stormwater that lot ended up being changed before we went through the final analysis, so it in, ended up being integrated into the overall design. Okay. Well said, David. Karen? Owens, when you spoke earlier about the uh, uh, butters to the left, um, the buffer between that, did you po mention the possibility of a fence there? Was that one of the possibilities uh, that was discussed? This would be to the June Island property. Hmm. Is, is that, whoops. Yes, that. This one here. I believe, and Joel, you'll have to correct me if I'm wrong on this. You've met with June. I think you're discussing about an eight-foot fence along there down through here to screen um, any traffic from her yard area. Running the whole length of the road or? Um, I'm going to let Joel answer that because uh, he met with June and I didn't. So. <laughs> yes, actually we didn't meet. We talked on the phone about this project. Uh, we have met before but not on the um, fence. I, my concerns and her concerns were that there would be some headlights uh, turning uh, on this corner and coming into her her house. and. Um, we were trying to clear of a natural buffer, some kind of uh, tree buffer or a bush buffer, but uh, we both thought that it might take too long for something to grow, so instant buffering would be a nice looking fence. Um, something eight feet. We haven't decided on a style yet. Um, I asked her to, I actually asked her to, to uh, maybe go to a fence company and give me a few styles that she might be interested in, and I'd look them over and we'd come to some kind of agreement on that. How far down the road? Uh, I'm willing to do the whole, the whole line. If that's Would, what she wants. Wouldn't that affect the site distances, though, in terms? Well, of you'd have to maybe go to a shorter fence on the end, or, or bring it in 50 feet from the end. If I could address that, the, the site distance. When we measure site distance, we come to the edge of the roadway. We come back 10 feet, and that's generally where your line of sight occurs, so any fencing that would be installed would need to start at the right-of-way or a little bit behind the right-of-way and through there so that I can maintain that, that clearance that, that we need to get. Further questions, Karen? Not at the moment. Uh, one of the abutters mentioned the possibility of uh, drainage across the proposed right away when the new road fill is brought in, uh, the present underlayment drainage behind the three lots, one of which will be part of this new development. Have you addressed that, Owen? Uh, that's <coughs> what we discussed a little bit earlier. Uh, there is a 10-foot wide drainage easement uh, that was, I believe, made part of this subdivision in through here. and. Uh, that, as my understanding is, and from our field surveys, and if June has a culvert out there, we'll be glad to go out and look at it. And if there is a culvert, then we'll certainly make sure it's integrated into our system. We did not find a culvert in the road crossing, but we will certainly be willing to look at that if she has it meet her. But um, when you come in through here, the road comes in fairly level, then it drops down towards where the wetland crossing is, and that's where we, during our site walks, when we were out there, where we had the predominant concern of the drainage down through there, and we're making sure that we pick that up. Um, there is, way down here, there's a structure that Maureen and I walked and looked at, but that's way down off the site that I'm told that the Army Corps of Engineers or somebody installed, and Steve Harding's walked it and looked at it, and through all the, you know, through the peer review, through the site walks, the surveys, um, we didn't observe any culverts up in here, but if there's one that we missed, then um, we will certainly go back out and look at it with Jim. Thank you. I have a question for the Fitzpatricks. Uh, in watching the two of you develop other lots, I've seen most of the mature trees stay, and I'm just concerned that the two of you have flagged the mature trees that were brought up by one of your butters, and for the most part, will they be outside building envelopes? There, there are a lot of nice, big old 
trees uh, in, in this site. Uh, I haven't actually flagged ones that I want to keep. Of, uh, we've, I, I would like to have the lots pinned, and of course we try to, we try to keep as much, many natural trees as possible. Uh, sometimes it's impossible. And sometimes those 100-year-old trees are diseased anyway. So, uh, you know, we do our best to, to, to keep the natural Thank you. Older trees. It kills me to, to, to <coughs> cut something that's been there for that long. So, um, I realize the two of you haven't developed your final plans yet, but could you give me a rough idea just by using your index finger where you think the building envelope on the lot furthest away to my right, bordering Mr. Tinsman's property, where you think the best building site would be on that lot? Lot number six? Yes. It would probably be in the higher end, up towards the front. I would like to face all the houses towards the road, sort of, so it would be angled towards, you know, maybe this way with the back facing that way and you see the contours so you try to keep the front to the higher elevations and maybe a daylight to the back. So we're, we're, we will be, uh, if, if we do the 50 foot buffer for Mr. Tinsman, uh, we should still be another 75 or 80 feet away with the home. So as far as best use of the land and value of the land, you probably would propose the building lot be further away from Mr. Tinsman's lot. Right. Best use of the land would be further away. I, I really would like to keep some some sort of a building envelope in the back just for, you know, a home like this, people might want a pool or, or something like that in their backyard. Thank but you. The best use, yes, is up towards the front. It's higher. John, you had a question? Yeah, I did. Uh, on that same issue, uh, if, uh, uh, although I personally I'd be in favor of the other uh, plan for the path, but if this original plan was used, does that mean that the 50-foot buffer, which is on the second plan, would not be part of that? Uh, that's something I haven't thought about yet. Um, the, the, the discussion I've had with Mr. Carlo and Mr. Tinsman is that I would, they, they had given, they, they had met me a few times and we have worked out a few different options. Um, some of them were, were just not feasible for me. This one is a, is a nice is a nice idea, I think, uh, to make everybody happy. I uh, this this 50 foot strip right here uh, is 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 really leading to nothing, and this up here is leading to something that could be sooner than later uh, connected to something. You know, I, I'm not sure who owns the, the land across the street, but I know it's closer to, to the trails of Bray Pond. Uh, so I would personally like to see this, this, this one work. Um, it'll keep Mr. Tinsman and Mr. Uh, Carlisle uh, somewhat happy. Of course, keep, you know, making them totally happy would be no project at all, but uh, at least it'll, it'll it, it, it's splitting the difference, you know, I, what I've done with my subdivisions, and I've always done this and made a point of doing this, is try to make everything work for the town, the abutters, and myself. And I think this is a good compromise for everybody if uh, we can please the abutters, the town, and myself. Uh, and it's, it's a nice idea. I, uh, and I would, uh, I would like to comment one thing. that I, I would like to see this go to... Uh, personally, like to see this go to the town, not for private. I'd like to see it public access. I think it'd be good for the town. Further questions? Thank you, Joe. At this time, I'd like to ask Maureen to address some of the concerns in regards to the town ordinances that were brought up during the town uh, public hearing. Maureen. There was there was a question asked about the detention pond and the and uh, I think if the applicant had spent about a half an hour going through their application they could have explained this in greater detail but the intent of the detention pond is that uh, the applicant has calculated how fast water is running off of the property right now and obviously as the property is developed more water will be running off the property than it does right now however uh, the, the purpose of the pond is to make sure that it doesn't run any more quickly off the property than it does now in its undeveloped state. So what happens is, if you have a large rainstorm now, water rolls off at so many cubic feet per second. Um, with the new development, water will roll off the property at that rate or a slower rate. 
and the additional water is going to collect in the detention pond and be released at a controlled rate so it will never leave the property any faster than it leaves right now. Um, the town engineer has reviewed this application as well as the, the, the applicant has hired a certified professional engineer to review it and they both agree with the calculations that are nationally recognized standards that that's the way the drainage is supposed to work. Um, there was a comment about the access across, across Ocean House Road and I just want everyone to be realized that I think there was a comment made that it's a commonly used area now. Um, the town does not now, nor will I ever expect it in the future, to encourage people to use trails to which there is no legal public access. I have done an inventory of all the town-owned property, all the property to which there is legal public access that's owned by the town and by the <coughs> land trust, and there is nothing on the other side of Ocean House Road that has legal public access right now. So uh, you may want to just keep in mind that any any trail usage on that side is at the tolerance of that private property owner and there is right now no direct connection from that end to Great Pond. Uh, there was a question that you had asked about the, the access. It's been the board's practice when a new road is proposed to uh, endeavor as much as possible to locate that road immediately across from an existing intersection. The intent being that by adding a fourth leg to an existing intersection, it's a safer traffic design than by creating another intersection somewhere else down the road, even if that intersection is more than 125 feet away. Because every time you have turning movements on a road, that's when you have more opportunities for accidents. So the applicant is, is really trying to follow the precedent that's been set by the board and a precedent that is, is commonly accepted by traffic engineers. Uh, this was a, the, exactly the kind of approach the planning board used with the recent Cross Hill project where the intersection of Cross Hill with, with uh, Sawyer Road is directly across from Prout Place. Now there was plenty of room in that project to move the intersection 125 feet one direction or the other, um, but everyone agreed that it would have been much safer to have a four-way intersection in one place than staggered intersections along the road. So that, that is uh, what the board has done in the past. Um, I think that's, unless anyone has any other questions, that's the only other things that I saw. Board members have a question of Maureen? If there is no further discussion, is there a motion to be made, David? I have a question, Maureen. Are we a uh, capable of ruling on this before the final decision is made as far as the, the two options are concerned? Um, the process that you're currently under is um, a process of a two-phase process because this is a major subdivision. There's a preliminary subdivision approval and then there's a final subdivision approval. And what you have been asked to do this evening is consider granting preliminary subdivision approval. You can also table it if you so choose. Um, with preliminary subdivision approval, this, this, this planning board has typically made sure that the concept is, is pretty concrete at that point. And final subdivision review has been used as an opportunity to dot the I's and cross the T's, to go through and take everything that's in the town engineer's letter and make sure that all the design specs have, have been completed um, to make sure that deeds have been submitted for any open space, uh, right-of-way deeds get drafted for uh, proposed roadway connections, drainage maintenance agreements um, for detention basins. Those are the kind of things that tend to happen during uh, final subdivision review and a performance guarantee is drafted as well. So I, I believe the applicant tonight would like some pretty clear direction from the board on whether they should go with the, the original proposed open space or the alternate. Perhaps we could take a straw vote from the board members on the podium as to whether you want the land conveyed to the town or whether you want it owned jointly by the six lot owners. Mine is conveyed to the town. Okay. David? Ditto. John? Yeah. And myself as well. That should be firm enough direction. <laughs> in regards to the changes in the 
right-of-ways and greenbelt footpaths. Uh, if I can start with John this time, which one do you well, lean towards, John? Yeah, well, based on everything I've heard uh, tonight, and I compliment the developer and the abutters on coming up with a uh, compromise, it would seem that the second option tries to address the concerns while still establishing the goal of creating the open space and the, and the pathway. I also think it addresses somewhat the setback concern for Mr. Tinsman, so that's another reason why I would, I would favor that. As far as not leading anywhere across 77, that may be true. Uh, it probably is true, but the configuration really in terms of where it goes from point to point is no different from the original uh, plan. So I, I'd be in favor of the <coughs> second plan. Thank you. Having walked the majority of the Greenbelt with members of the Conservation Commission, I can state to the board and to the public that one of the missing links we have is uh, connections to the Great Pond Trails. Uh, they kind of sit in the center of town there, uh, probably one of our most used Greenbelts, and, and for many sections of the town you can't walk to them, you have to drive to them. Uh, so I think the, uh, the second proposal, the revised proposal that was shown this evening in giving us that right away from this proposed public land, 277, is a very valuable resource. David? I, I, would, uh, I would think that the second option is uh, my choice. It's also mine. Okay. That handles that. Uh, Maureen gave a very detailed ordinance-oriented explanation of what a preliminary subdivision review is. Basically what it is to me, a member of the public, is it doesn't give the applicant the right to do anything except submit up the final revised plan to us. Uh, no development can take place, no preliminary work can take place, and it is, not, it is also not an assurance that the final subdivision uh, plans will be approved. Uh, everything is still very open, and that's just a comment as the chair I wanted to make to the board. Further discussion, David? Time to make a mo Can I make a motion? Go right ahead, sir. Uh, make, make a motion for approval, finding of fact. Fitzpatrick Associates is requesting preliminary subdivision review and a resource pr protection permit for the proposed six lot Railback Ridge subdivision located off Ocean House Road, which requires review under section 16-2-4 review and approval of major subdivision plans, section 19-8-3, resource protection permit, and open space zoning, section 19-7-2. The town engineer has recommended revisions to the plans which will improve stormwater and road design. The placement of Whaleback Ridge Road at the intersection of Old Ocean House Road and Trundy Road is a safer traffic design than creating a new curb cut intersection elsewhere on the same road and is consistent with past planning board decisions. Limiting the type of activities outside the proposed building envelopes will help retain a vegetative buffer and promote privacy for each lot. The ap application substantially complies with section 16-2-4 review and approval of major subdivision plan, section 19-8-3, resource protection permit and open space zoning, section 19-7-2. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and the materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Fitzpatrick Associates for preliminary subdivision review and resource protection permit <coughs> proposed for six lot Whaleback Ridge subdivision located off Old Ocean House Road be approved for the following conditions. That the plans be revised <coughs> per the town engineer's letter dated 7-11-2000 and that a note be added to the plans that activities outside the building envelope shall be limited to the installation of a driveway and utilities and removal of deceased or dying vegetation. 
Do I hear a second? Second. Second. Thank you, Karen. Are there any additions, concerns, or questions concerning the motion? Hearing none, I, I just want to make a comment to the public. Whenever a planning board member reads a two-page motion, as Mr. Griffin did, uh, I'd like to note that Maureen, in preparing the proposed agenda for all of our meetings, uh, in our packet we also have a motion for denial and a motion for tabling, and we revise those suggestions from her as the meeting goes on. So don't give credit to Mr. Griffin for having written that two-page motion. <laughs> it came from Maureen, and I just wanted to let everyone know it's not a matter of rubber stamping. Uh, we revise them and change them with conditions as the meeting goes forward. Uh, if there are no further concerns of the board, those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. <coughs> Thank you. It is unanimous. Thank you to the applicant and those people who took the time to spoke at the public hearing. Uh, again, if you have any further comments, please contact Maureen at the town office. And uh, a written letter is always the best way to keep the board informed. Yeah. We will drag our feet for just a few minutes and allow the next applicant to uh, put up any visual aids they need next to the podium. Those of you who wish to discuss the pre previous item that was on the agenda, you can use the conference room behind this wall or the cafeteria downstairs. Thank you. Where is my Let's see if I can find mine. trying to lower the noise level for you. We'll be with you in just a moment. Thank you. To the record, the board would like to welcome back Mr. Parkhurst and Mr. Wilcox. Second item on the agenda tonight on the new business is On Our Planet Community School Site Plan. Susan Martin Pillsbury, representing On Our Planet Community School, is requesting site plan review to relocate to the Pond Cove Shopping Center located at 327 Ocean House Road. Site plan review is required because the shopping center space will be changed from retail to the more intensive institutional use. The application will be reviewed for compliance with Section 19-9 Site Plan Regulations and Section 19-6-4 Town Center Design Standards. We'll begin by having Susan just give us a brief overview of any changes since our last workshop, and then we'll open for discussion. Okay. Um, I'm going to start with changes that we're making to the site. Um, first, I'm going to start with the changes that um, I've come up with after the town engineer um, voiced his concerns um, to Maureen. We are not um, going to 
put a guardrail in front of the four designated spots. We've decided to go back with the idea of putting wheel stops, which is the curb stops that we talked about in our workshop. Um, starting from the dry cleaner across to the Greater Portland um, Credit Union, leaving the open spaces that are handicap accessible, which I believe are the two to three right here. The next piece that we're changing on the site plan um, is that we are designating four spots um, in front of On Our Planet School um, with signs indicating the time of designation. Um, wooden signs that detail that midday um, and at the end of the day they are designated spots for the um, departure and arrivals of um, the clients. We talked about the traffic flow um, coming, entering from both sides of the parking lot, um, one speed as well as um, traffic flow. Um, with Lathrop and Lathrop, um, who is the owner of the Pond Cove Shopping Center, we discussed an idea of putting in um, low grade speed tables. So we have placed one on the site plan where there are not any um, parking spots. Our concern is that it's not close to the school, but yet the reason not to um, put it near the school is because of cars will have to be backing out and over a speed table, which doesn't seem to be conducive to um, a parking lot. Um, so we have placed it here, hoping that it would um, slow traffic down coming this way from the IGA area. Um, the next piece that we're changing on the location is the back area, which is 675 square feet, will be turned into um, a play area. It needs to be, the pavement needs to be taken up, um, and there's some utility structures that need to be um, capped over and a fence placed in front so that there isn't any um, safety hazards, which I explained in um, an addition piece that I believe you have this evening. We're not changing any other physical piece to the, um, to the site that is outside. Um, inside is getting renovated. Um, so that gives that question of change. Um, the next piece would be to just address the concerns um, for completeness. Can I, for, can I go with that? Or do you need to discuss something? Of the changes. Go right ahead. Okay. Um, in the remarks given back from Maureen and um, the town engineer, there was a question about lighting, um, the lighting fixtures. We're not um, changing any lighting fixtures that are already there at the um, rental property, except for adding um, two to three lighting fixtures for our sign, um, as well as. Um, I think that's it, let me just read. Two to three lighting fixtures for our sign, which um, is already being used um, and is zoned, the sign is zoned appropriate. Um, the Greater Portland Community um, Credit Union is using the same um, lights. Um, the other issue is that um, for a decor, they're changing over two lights on the brick face. Um, but they're, again, they're already being used at um, the shopping center. Um, we discussed the wheel stops that will be placed in so that um, bumpers do not go over the sidewalks. Um, we just, instead of the guardrail, which um, the town engineer and Marine had issues with that, which we agreed that it was making more of a boundary for our clients. Um, our sign is um, not going to be um, higher than the 20 feet um, for zoning standards and the length is appropriate. Right now the Cape Eye Care sign is even larger than our sign that we're proposing. Um, our play area, uh, which is the 675 square feet directly in the back. Um, I've talked to both utility companies, CMP, as well as um, an oil company and the oil company has suggested to um, enclose the oil tank, in which that means doghouse it with um, the appropriate hinge door so that they can um, have access to it. CMP has um, expressed that they're 
as is, there isn't a problem with safety with the meters there or um, wires that are capped, but we have decided to um, add a fence coming um, a foot and a half out from that wall and attaching to um, the other fence that is on um, the plan. Um, there were other positions on drainage. Um, there are two pipes that drain water when it rains. Um, our suggestions were to one pipe comes out and kind of creates a little waterfall. Our suggestions are to just kind of make another pipe going at a 90 degree angle to drain it um, right at the floor of the playground onto pebbles. The next pipe can um, have an extra um, piece of piping out to drain outside of um, our play area, none of which either um, option is not changing the flow of the water whatsoever. Um, it's going right out to the parking lot where um, it currently goes to now. Um, the next piece um, were the ballards, which are yellow cement posts that are there for um, cars or trucks so that they don't back into buildings. They will be taken out when um, the repaving occurs and will be replaced if needed um, in front of our fence um, so that nobody backs up into the, to the fence. Um, the engineer mentioned vents, which were two vents that are located on the building. Um, the vents are currently used for um, a dryer vent and for a furnace, which is very common in every household. Um, I think I mentioned that all for the outside um, play area. The next thing was the fencing that I um, wasn't clear on, that we are using um, a wooden fence. It wouldn't be um, any higher than six feet, um, and it's made out of cedar. Um, the other issue was the speed table, which we talked about um, on the plan previous. Thank you, Suzanne. In the interest of time and organization, I ask that the board members at this time ask any questions of the applicant in regards to completeness or incompleteness of this application. Actually, I have a <clears throat> question for Maureen. Go right ahead, Steve. The uh, last thing that I, in business that I remember going into the shopping center was, I think, Fleet Bank, and we had a very detailed front elevation showing sign, height, location, and everything else. And, <clears throat> I mean, do we need to do that, this application? Or do we have to be consistent, or what? Um, I think what you're alluding to is that there was some issue about lighting at that time. Um, with the Fleet Bank application, the only inconsistency was the addition of lighting that wasn't shown on the plan. Um, yes, you, what, we've, what we've done usually is we've asked people to show us what the facade looks like, especially if they're making changes. Uh, this applicant is um, stating that they're making absolutely no changes to the exterior except they're installing a sign They've given us um, a detail of the sign with the size that is consistent with the sign ordinance. The only problem we have is we don't have any information on how high it is off the ground. And obviously, if we had an elevation, we would know that. Um, sign ordinance does. So 12 feet high. Yeah. <coughs> on here, but it, I, I'm worried about the uh, code enforcement officer mm -hmm. not having something to um, hang his hat on if he needs to. Uh, that is, that is clearly an issue the board needs to think about. Um, on the one hand, this is an existing site. Uh, the applicant is proposing not to make a lot of changes. Uh, but on the other hand, if you are expecting a specific thing to happen there and expecting the code officer to enforce it, he needs one set of plans that are clearly the set of plans that are going to be used. Now, if, if all you tell the code officer is there are going to be no changes to the exterior, except there's going to be some lights put up, and there's going to be a sign put up. Um, that's all he's going to look for. That's all he's going to be able to look for. Um, you know, we have two plans here that, that show the, the, the back of the play area. It would need to be made clear that the most recently submitted plan is the one that you're looking at. So, uh, yeah, th there is an issue here. You, you don't have to ask for an elevation. Certainly, if you ask for one, it would be consistent with what you've done in the past. 
It's a valid issue. Can it be handled by adding a condition to any proposed motion for approval? Um, that the final plan submitted? My concern with that would be that um, if, if you did that, the, the expectation of what the facade was going to look like would have to be so clear that staff wouldn't have to make any interpretations once they got it. And if it is that clear, do you need the actual drawing? Good question. <laughs> okay, back to square one. I, I have a question also. Then. Go ahead, Mark. Is, is this something that because we now have the town center, which we didn't have before, signage sort of falls into the overall uh, town center zone, whereas a um, long time ago we really didn't even touch signage at all. It was just building, the sign on building it. inspector well, made sure it met the sign ordinance, and I, I, we really didn't have anything to do with it. But yeah. didn't have a town center with yeah, sort I, of I would, sign guidelines. I would uh, respectfully differ with that. Um, the in by the sea, which was approved before I was hired, uh, included a specific design for that sign. Uh, the same for Stonegate. In fact, signage is a specific requirement of the site plan regulations. And what has happened since then is that we have a much better sign ordinance now, so there's a lot less negotiation on, on size and height. Um, but the board still has a clear authority under the site plan regulations to get specific information about signage. Okay. So I think I'm clear, but I just want to read again what I wrote to you um, to change. The sign will not be placed any higher than 20 feet and will meet zoning standards for length in regards to the length of the property storefront. The length of the sign that I proposed in my proposal is what I understand is um, okay um, from Burr signs um, because the Cape Eye Care sign right now is a 3 by 11. So my sign is actually smaller. Um, Burr Signs has verified that the proposed sign will be placed approximately 12 feet, no higher off the ground, and is um, shorter in length than the current. I can keep going on. But, so that isn't giving enough information. That's not precise because of the height, I guess, is what I'm that's gathering. That's a decision the board needs to okay, make. Okay, that's what I just want to know. <laughs> I, I have a question. Go right ahead, Mike. Do you, how high off the ground are all the other signs? Would yours be at a totally different level? No, and I think what, you've indicated? what we're trying to do, um, if I'm speaking um, for Sue here, is that mm -hmm. we're trying to unify the signs um, in the sense um, so that sort of. the designs eventually will be mm -hmm. the same and made out of the same material. So the height, to me, needs to be very close to that too because I think if everybody's up and down um, it wouldn't look good and right now um, pretty much everyone's there I think that Cape I was actually a little lower um, than the video jam they are the other um, tenants are where um, Burr signs had you have the photograph has placed it, placed it a little is higher than the Cape I care sign was Fleets might be kind of more centered, but the other smaller tenants um, seem to be all in the same on the same level. Thank you, You're John. Um, did did we ever finalize the issue from the workshop concerning the access or where you would take the children out from if you were going outside or going for a walk or something like that? Which I don't think we ever. I don't think we finalized that, but I, I envision the gate, there's the gate um, on the landscape design is right here, and I envision um, utilizing this. I know there isn't, you know, a sidewalk there, but um, when talking to people about the sidewalk right here and crossing over, um, that could be used, um, and then trying to gain access here. Um, sometimes, you know, when people are coming out, it, it's hard to see anybody walking right from the sidewalk. Um, I would like to use the back so that we don't have to deal, you know, with um, that there isn't a continuation of a sidewalk to get to the town sidewalk. Um, it's just, you know, there, everyone's parked back there. There isn't traffic flowing in and out. And when we are doing our walks, it would be. Um, Again, younger children are in 
large buggies or large wagons. Um, maybe some older children are, are on a rope with the knot with two staff. I don't envision one staff taking a rope of um, even five children out. I mean, they can walk. We're, we're very highly staffed, and they can help walk on a group of children to the library and come back and um, still be part of the program. But is there access? That's what I'm... It's hard to tell whether there's access across either in the back or... Um, which I can't quite see. This, this is all owned by the town, you know, so you have the municipal buildings here. Um, there isn't a clear-cut access to playgrounds, but there are parking areas back here. There's access, there's the parking areas here, and then there's the green here that is owned by the town. Um, you know, there's a small driveway that goes into the back. Um, again, there's the sidewalk here that is close to the sidewalk. Um, I, I guess you know, it's I'm one concerned. of those things I would be... I would be concerned too. Yeah, I'm concerned have... about having the only access being across the front of the parking lot where the entrance is for cars coming in and out. I mean, that's really my. We would, would have. We would have to have to for fire code. I mean, there's there's you know a door here, and then we would have to have an access out here for fire safety. So, do you mean a physical well, no, access? It, I'm not sure. I mean it. I realize you can leave the building yep. out of the back, yep. but if you're going to walk anywhere and that doesn't have access beyond that, will it force you to have to go out the front and through the parking lot? I don't think it will force us. I think with the whole idea of having it um, community-based, I think people are going to be watching for us. I think the fire station, I think the police officers will know that that we're here and, and we're not going to be 20 children walking out there. Again, it's going to be highly supervised and they do have a sidewalk here and I, I would love to say to them, boy, can I, you know, use your sidewalk to get back here, you know, and I think with that community sense, I think that could be built in and I think um, I, I'm not um, trying to say I need that, I have to have that because I think we're a very safe, you know, group of adults. Um, but there's access like there aren't the property back here to the school like let's say if we were walking to the library is all open we can get around if that's more what you mean um there is access you know to get to different points um in the community thank you further questions of the applicant hearing none before we go on uh do any of the board members have any directions or concerns in regarding site walks or public hearings on this matter? We discussed this briefly at workshop and everybody seems to know where the Pong Cove Shopping Center is. <laughs> Don't, we didn't discuss having a public hearing at the workshop, did we? Uh, no, we did not, but it's something Maureen always covers in her, her memorandum to us. I do have signatures from all the tenants as well as um, Phil's Cogshaw, who I believe, and as well as Phil Cogshaw, as well as um, the owner of the Millworks and the paint store. So all my, I believe my abutting neighbors are not opposed. There hasn't seen, there hasn't been submitted to the board any no, public um, information I, in regards to any right questions here. they feel are unanswered, so no need for a public hearing. Do I hear a motion in regards to completeness then, unless there's further discussion? Um, do we still need to get the information about foot candles if we just have water? Do we need that? I mean, is that something that, again, the code enforcement officer needs? Um, I, I think it's something, um, it's an excellent method of determining exactly how bright the light is going to be. And the reason I, uh, pointed it out to you is because there have been issues with the brightness of lights in the Ponco Shopping Center. Mm -hmm. There, There is an issue coming before you about the brightness of lights at the Key Bank building. Um, and the only standardized way to measure that is with foot candle information. I talked with, I consulted with um, an, one of the owners of Rockingham Electric and he said that it was very difficult 
at this point this week to measure what um, the foot candle radius would be because he did, we didn't have the information of where he wanted to measure from. Five feet, 10 feet, 100, you know, we didn't have that information. Um, so in turn, I um, photocopied the um, style of lights that are already being used and that I'm gonna be using um, for you. For, for the code enforcement officer, we, we don't even have a light meter and if that ever became an issue, we'd probably borrow one from a community that did. Um, but if we have information about what the light fixture is supposed to look like and what the wattage is, the code officer is more than capable of verifying that. <clears throat> Thank you, Steve. Any more concerns from the board? David? Still a little concern about the sign. Um, just as far as the elevation of the sign, or the size of the existing sign that it replaces. Um, do you have any information as to its size? Of the I sign have the that's size. Presently there? The size um, is three by 11. That's presently there. Um, but I don't have the elevation. All I have is um, from Burr signs that that you know approximately how high my sign would you know be you know and um, but I have that the Cape Eye Care sign is three um, feet by 11 feet. The on your sign, you have at one end uh, a planet. Mm -hmm. Is that also included in the overall yes. dimension? Yes, and that's what I asked him, that the planet wasn't coming way off the building, or, or um, yes, that he said that that is no higher than the 12 feet. Okay, but the, the size of the sign is 3 foot 7 by 10, and it, that 3 foot 7 is measured from the bottom of the sign to the top of the planet? I can't tell you 100%, but I would think that he would have. I didn't ask him that. I just asked him to verify, um, yeah, the length. I would assume, I, I asked him to verify the height of when it is placed, if the planet is going to go over that. It might be practical. Well, my thoughts, go ahead. I have to say, <coughs> if you've submitted a sign with three foot seven and it doesn't include the planet, the sign's probably going to shrink a little bit, so yeah. it will. Yeah, and I'm willing to do that, obviously. I mean, I'm willing, you know, to do that. Um, you know, again, it's something I didn't ask him before this meeting to double check. Um, but just as an example of how the code officer is going to work with this, I mean, that, that has specifications on how long, how wide, and it says it's supposed to be wall mounted. I mean, that, that has plenty of detail for the code enforcement officer to say, like I said, if, if, if they measured it and they didn't include the part of the planet that exceeds the rectangle, I get a feeling it's going to be a smaller sign in the end because he won't let it be any larger than three feet, seven inches high, according to this plan. Like to call for a motion, if at all possible. On completeness. I make a motion. Thank you, Steve. Be it ordered that, based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Suzanne Martin Pillsbury on behalf of the On Our Planet Community School for a site plan review for a change of use to institutional at the Pond Cove Shopping Center, located at 327 Ocean House Road, be deemed complete. Thank you. Do I hear a second? Second. Thank you, John. It is moved and seconded that the application be deemed complete. Is there further discussion by board members on completeness? Hearing none, those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. It is unanimous. Thank you. We've already handled the matter of public opinion, not public opinion, public hearing. Now we'll open it up for general discussion on the application as a whole. The board members have any questions of the applicant? If you could, and I know we talked about this um, 
but what exactly would the signs in the designated parking spaces say? They will say, let me just uh, make sure I am correct on this. Um, they're going to be 18 by 12 inch wooden signs, which is your basic um, informational sign that you see um, that reads, like what's Direction. one? Directional signs. Um, they would be wooden though instead of metal. And they are going to read um, school parking only from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. and 3.30 p.m. to 6 o'clock p.m. We decided to take the morning time out um, so the sign read better and it's not an issue. There's hardly anybody there between the hours of 8 and 9. Um, we felt that we didn't want to designate the four spots specifically to On Our Planet because um, allowing people for Fleet Bank um, to be there on the, you know, during the other times. Um, I, I just felt like I, I, you know, I'm kind of exceeding a little bit over to Video Jam and Fleet Bank and I felt like this was a good compromise um, and I felt like the signs will read well. And will the spaces themselves be marked in some way or just the Yeah, I think we talked about that they could be. If that is um, zoned appropriately, we could have a color. We, we weren't planning on marking the spaces. We thought that the signage and the curb stops were satisfying the requirements. Mm -hmm. If it's something that you require, then we, we would consider that. Uh, just from looking at the plan. Of the plan. Well, yeah, that's so that you can <coughs> see. Um, see it better. We could do it through striping if necessary. Thank you. Thank you, John. Further questions from the board? David? I had one question on the uh, proposed fence in the play area to protect against some of the utilities that are there. You mentioned that there were two vents, that, and neither of which you suspect have any effect on the on outside. Is, you said one of those was the furnace. Is that an air intake for the furnace? I would assume it would be. You want to make sure that it is. Is your question about the, fur the about furnace the or the vent? Oh, the vent. Vents. Yeah, it's an airing for... Um, air intake? It's for air intake, okay. yes. And in that, they have um, a little spot so that you can have a drier outtake. Okay. to it. Um, so it's really for that air intake. Right, good. That's my question. Thank you, David. Further comments? Chair would like to call for a motion. Okay. Mr. Parkhurst. Findings of fact, <clears throat> number one, Suzanne Martin Pillsbury representing On Our Planet Community School is requesting a site plan review to relo relocate to the Pond Cove Shopping Center located at 327 Ocean House Road, which requires review under section 19-9 site plan regulations and section 19-6-4 town center design standards. Number two, the town engineer has requested additional information regarding the conversion of a year rear yard with the utility structures to a play area. In order to, number three, in order to assure safe unloading and loading of children attending the school, no barrier should be placed between the designated parking spaces and the sidewalk in front of the school. Number four, that the plan substantially complies with section 19-9 site plan regulations and section 19-6-4 town center design standards. <coughs> Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Suzanne Martin Pillsbury on behalf of On Our Planet Community School for site plan review for a change of use to institutional at the Pond Cove Shopping Center located at 327 Ocean House Road be approved subject to the following conditions. Number th one, the information be submitted by the applicant to the town engineer's satisfaction describing how the existing utility structures behind the school re be removed to install a play area. Number two, that the proposed guardrail be redesigned as for individual, oops, excuse me, that the guard, guardrail be replaced with curb stops that prevent parked cars from overhanging the sidewalk and do not create a barrier for 
for people exiting cars to step onto the sidewalk. And number three, the, the sign design meet code for height, size, and lighting. Number four, that there will be no alterations of the site nor building permit issued until the above conditions have been met. Thank you, Mr. Parkhurst. Is there a second? Can I ask a question or suggest an additional modification to it? Mr. Steve, the you can, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We um, do. <laughs> um, under number one, uh, the applicant isn't proposing to remove uh, the utility structures. Um, I think what she's actually trying to do is restrict access to them by the children. Um, you know, if we approve it as written, aren't they going to be looking for actual removal of the structures? Um, could we Aren't you, in fact, this? burying them and in encapsulating them? No. Um, they, what, after speaking with the utility companies, I am, with the oil tank, it is, um, it is going to have a wooden structure around it. And then with where the meters are, there is going to be a wooden fence across it, but yet giving access to CMP. Um, okay. So I'm not. Go ahead, Maureen. Um, I think, I think um, Karen has a point. The applicant had originally said they were going to be removing everything. Their, their current plan actually talks about um, excluding the utility structures from the play area. And maybe what we could do is that um, how, in, where it says that information be submitted, it, we could revise it to say that information be submitted by the applicant to the town engineer's satisfaction describing how the existing utility structures will be excluded from the play area. <clears throat> or access restricted in such a way that is acceptable to the town engineer. Or that the play area be protected from utilities. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll go I like you, Steve. <laughs> I like the word protected. <laughs> Yes. And I still need a second. Thank you, David. Further discussion of the motion proposed? Hearing none, those in favor, please raise your right hand. It is unanimous. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> Were you applauding Suzanne or the planning board? <laughs> I need tissues again. No, yeah. <laughs> There's nothing further to come before. A motion to adjourn is in order. Moved. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you, everyone. Good evening.